Good morning, Patreon tribe. Master Sukuri coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Feeling fantastic after a week of a little bit, uh, just going a little bit slower than I generally do because I'm coming off of some injuries, just over usage as a result of making this new sound room. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this. I put the curtain up on the open space and I really, really do feel there is a big change in the sound as I'm doing this. So let me know in the comments if you guys think the sound is better with the new sound room. I can really feel there's no echo and it's just fantastic. So I'm hoping to get a lot done. Today, I have a very special podcast for you guys. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I consider the aspects of a good mastery. Now, when I say the aspects of a good mastery, these are a combination of ideas that I have grown with as a street capoeira all the way up to a mastery of capoeira as a non-Brazilian teacher, but also with a lot of education, including uh, entrepreneurial and leadership and MBA class level work that I've done in my life. So all of that's coming together as it is all the sum total of my experience. And I want to talk about each point. And after each point, I would really like to be able to give you guys maybe a small story from my life or from what I've heard or experienced. So sometimes it may not be 100% accurate, but hopefully this will help to communicate the point and the importance of each aspect. So let's get to it. Guys, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for always supporting, and I'm having a fantastic time doing this. The new sound room is just phenomenal, and uh, special thanks to all of you for making this possible. So here we go. What are the aspects of a good mastery? Now, the aspects of a good mastery are pretty much the same aspects as the a good leader in an NPO, a nonprofit, or a aspects in a good CEO of a good company, okay? First, vision. What's important to understand as we as we look at the at the what's what is a vision for a couple and a master, it's not just um, ambiguous or things that are unclear. For example, a lot of people might say, oh to be you know vision is I want to have the biggest group in the world. But without any way to quantify or to calculate how many people you have actually um, and how many capoeiristas there are in the world, just saying something so so uh, ambiguous is, 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 is impossible. So vision. For me, um, a lot of times I asked masters growing up, well, what's your, what's your vision for your group? And a lot of them actually never had a vision. They just fell into it and did capoeira as as a career, but a lot of it just had a very very uh, blue collar, not developmental. Just you know, show up to work, do my best uh, by the quality of my work. I hope to get a promotion and I hope to you know secure lifetime employment. And a lot of masters that I've known have actually lived this way with capoeira. Some have gotten really lucky or really, really organized and been able to make it uh, a bigger group. So sometimes you see some of the bigger groups, but with, with some, without some of the other aspects of what I'm going to talk about today, then you won't really be able to have a solid group. And this all comes back to leadership and vision. So for me, vision for Capoeira Zoador is something I always tell people. I don't want to be the biggest group in the world. I don't want to be the, it's impossible to be the best group because there's no way to determine what's the best, right? But I do feel it is a, I am able to try to be the coolest group in the world because the coolest group is subjective and, and an opinion that my students and other people might have of our group. Not people who don't know me, but people who are associated with me with, for example, I did a, a podcast with, with Mestre Gallego. If he thinks I'm doing a, 
my 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 group is cool, then that actually matters for me because it's someone I talk to, a uh, contra mesti uh, vaquero. If he thinks, oh, mesti, your kids look so cool, then it's important. Contra mesti cobrinha, contra mesti jacaré. People who are part of my group say, wow, we have a cool group. These things are are the vision that I have. I want others around me to go, man, you have a cool group. And when I mean cool group, I don't mean fashion. I mean, wow, you guys are really valuing and learning and understanding the beauty of capoeira and all the other things around it such as afro-brazilian culture so for me the vision is is that to create a cool group okay to do that you need the second point the second point is inspiration inspiration how do you inspire people long term one of the reoccurring themes in capoeira that I've seen is the ability because a lot of capoeiristas generate a share this 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 uh, energy that people are attracted to that it's almost like like a drug you know people get addicted to this capoeira a share however if you don't inspire people um, on a continuous basis sticking to your plan and, and understanding this then it's easy for people to lose their interest or like any drug get used to it and expect more so a lot of people will inspire people but only in a short term and hopefully that the ability to inspire continuously over many years to keep people inspired is something that a master really needs to understand, a master that really needs to understand. Because it's not about just inspiring to join Capoeira. It's not about inspiring to to get their first cordon or their second cordon or to graduate to become a contramaster or a master or a mestra. It's to inspire people to make Capoeira a part of their life forever. And I have that with a lot of my students, right? I've got students who've been doing capoeira with me, like my wife and Contra Mestre Disco, Mestre Linguiza, for over 20 years. So I'm inspiring them that capoeira is, is, is a worthwhile aspect to add to their life. The next one is something that we all we all know is a very challenging thing, but it's even more challenging when, when you come from a, a cultural background of disorganization. Growing up as Mexican-American, and right on the border and speaking Spanish and, and, and dealing with a lot of people, a lot of times people would make subtle racial uh, microaggression jokes with me when I was growing up all the way through college. Is like, you know, wow. You know, oh, if, if someone's a little bit late, someone says, mañana, you know, mañana syndrome, which means tomorrow syndrome. Like Mexicans or Latinos are always tomorrow. Tomorrow always not on time. And this doesn't help when a lot of capoeira messages tend to be um, not on time. I don't know how it is now, but I know that the organization of time has always been something that people say is cultural when it's actually just unprofessional. And I've talked about this in other podcasts because lawyers, doctors from any country tend to be more organized with their time. Organization and time organization is the most important. The second topic of organization is the professionalism to create a good product, right? You are selling capoeira. You are selling a non-tangible uh, product. This means you can't touch it. You sell a feeling. So to sell that feeling, you even more have to be organized in the day-to-day -day things. For example, event organization. Having, when students ask you where, where, you know, where can I buy a bidding boat? You should have stock. So you should have invested in having merchandise. A lot of capoeira people that I meet only want to build a business from free and for as little as possible. It is rare that I see a capoeira person investing into capoeira. Very rare, a master or a master, because they don't, they're like, oh, they use their connections to, to lower the prices to this, but actually you can't do that because when you organize, for example, an academia, for me it's even, um, I think, a special situation as most of my organization is with, with kids. Since most of my students are kids, I need to be overly organized so that I can organize not only the kids, but the parents and the family members that tend to come. Our last bachizado. People were like, wow, you have a lot of kids. But you, 
if you look at the people sitting down, we had over 150 chairs out for family members, grandma, grandpa, um, uncles, aunts, friends, family, brothers and sisters. So their time is also something I always take in to consideration when I organize. So organization is an incredibly important aspect of of capoeira and of being a master or a master. So um, it's never perfect, but there's a very big difference between doing your best professionally and doing your best with no ability. So you need to learn what is organization and get feedback and ask people. Like um, I was, I'm, I'm always traumatized and worried. I was like, wow, this bachizada for the kids is going so slow. Two at a time, the kids enjoyed it. Then at the end, a lot of people said, wow, that was smooth for so many kids. It was so smooth. And I was like, thank you, because I'd planned out how I wanted to do things. Fourth is communication. I don't think I have the words to communicate to everybody how important this is. When I was uh, studying and doing different things, I was interested in, in, in relationships and how they work. And the number one reason people separate or divorce in, in the world, uh, especially in, in America, I'm gonna go with America because that's what I'm researching generally and in Japan, is lack of communication. If two people who are in love cannot communicate, then we as a group, or as a master of capoeira need to learn that it's not generally the other person who has the communication skills or the or the responsibility to communicate but us as masters and masters we need to teach people how to communicate most people i've come across in capoeira have no communication skills very few um i always try to tell people look just say it no secrets. Tell me what it is. Why? It always comes back to you if you don't communicate communicate clearly. I always tell people, I tell you guys directly, I say it in front of everyone if, if the situation is okay. Generally, why? Because then it can't come back to bite me and later. I like to tell people in a group, guys, this is what I expect. That way, if you don't understand, it's your fault. If you're a non-native speaker and you don't understand and you don't communicate to me that you don't understand or to someone else, then it's your fault. And this is actually something that I think is very important, especially when you have a lot of people. Like sometimes parents will say, um, oh, I didn't know. And I say it was in the email. So we communicated it. Oh, I didn't understand. Well, that's why at the end of the email, it says, if you have any questions, please ask. I do everything to not be responsible for other persons or other people's lack of communication um, ability. And this is important because for me over the years, it's what's really saved me a lot of headaches. Be very direct. Be very, um, you can be um, soft in how you say things. Everyone has their own way of doing. Mine tends to be more direct because of who I am and my experiences and my age. So... Sometimes people are like, wow, that was really direct. But the people around me here especially know I'm like that. So I don't have a problem and they know that I'm going to be direct. And they prefer it, actually. Over time, they've really realized that that's most important, is that I can communicate to them so everyone is on the same page. Especially when it comes to more leadership things inside of Capoeira and growing your group. Number five, authenticity and self-awareness. What is authenticity? Authenticity is the ability to, to for people to feel you're being honest in how you behave in your life. For example, if you don't drink in front of your students, but you drink, you know, somewhere else, and not saying like heavily, but people are like, oh, I didn't know he drank. That happened one time when Mestre Accordion came to visit, and we had taken him out, and every time he came here, I love taking him to go try different little things around Japan and, and Tokyo. And some of his students were like, whoa, Mestri doesn't drink. I go, he doesn't drink in front of you because of the way you would perceive it. If someone is not able to be, if you're not able to be authentic in front of your students, then you really need to look at yourself, become self-aware and say, well, what is it? 
about me that I don't like to present to my students or I feel uncomfortable. And there will always be excuses. But generally, those excuses come from bad behavior. I, I like to drink. I like a cigar once in a while. But I don't do that before class. I don't do that and act wild in front of students. I don't do that and then smoke in front of the kids. Um, it's important that people can see you authentically. Why? I always believe as a master, people put you on a pedestal. And because of the way you try to act, to be like leader and everything, that people are just waiting for a reason for you to fall off your pedestal not, or they want to knock you down. And I don't think this is a always a deliberate thing, but if you're not authentic and you're not telling them what you know and what you don't know, it'll always be be bad for you in the in the long run. For example, one of the biggest things that I run across to in the mastery community is masters can never not know. It masters will say, "Oh, uh, this is that, or this means that, or this is that," and they'll invent, which is a lie, and then later it'll come back to bite them, or it'll cause conflict because another master said something else, or the student discovered a different piece of information. When I, when I tell people, I go, look, if I don't know, I'll ask. I have no problem calling an older master, somebody with more experience, and asking them, you know, what, what, what does this mean? And a lot of times they'll say, oh, I don't know either, but it could mean, right? And there's a difference between saying it means inventing and lying versus um, it could be and say, well, this is kind of how I see it. But you can always check. And this is important on self-awareness is when you lead – as a, as a master or master of capoeira or a, a teacher, you know, you need to know where are you, where are you deficient? Where are you not strong? For example, if your leadership, or let's say you haven't developed a self vision, like a what you want of your vision of yourself as a, as a master or a vision of what you want to take your group, then that's self-awareness point that you need to work on. If you're not able to inspire people, then it's a self-awareness thing, right? How, how come I'm not able to inspire people? If you constantly have organizational problems, this is hard because, again, this is stuff that comes back and I see a lot. And a lot of people are just unaware of how bad they are at organization. They, they lack a lot of discipline. And they really don't know how bad their organization is that when an organized person is around, they, they just don't get it. It's like it's like a... Trying to explain um, color to a person who's colorblind sometimes. You, you, you try and you try, but they just don't get it. And that happens a lot. But, you know, again, this is where you, you, you get creative and flexible the ne few, next few points. So self-awareness of what you're doing is so important, right? You need to, where can I improve as a person? And this is where the next two points come in, and it's really important too, is creativity. As a capoeira teacher, even though you're teaching a capoeira class and something you've been doing for maybe 5, 10, 20, 30, 35 years, more, you always kind of have to keep it creative, right? You can't do the exact same thing every day and expect people to come. So, you, you know, every capoeira master that I know has evolved over time and, and, and fine-tuned their teaching way change it a little bit here, change it a little bit there. And the ones that are successful have been able to be creative and to create some fun exercises, for example. The creativity of how to teach music, the creativity of, of creating a better project. For example, I'm going to be making uh, Musicalidade, which is musical awareness and quality for Capoeira music and Afro-Brazilian music here for um, all of you here on Patreon. That's coming up a, a course that I'm really excited to do, but that's a product that I've created. It's through my creativity that I've done that and um, understanding that I need to constantly be creative, creating events, creating, you know, different ways to inspire, creating different ways to organize, creative in my communication and always creative in my vision, right? And my self-awareness and authenticity. Each one kind of rolls into the other one, but these points are very important, I feel. Flexibility. When I came to Japan, I was focused on being a hardcore capoeira teacher for adults. I had no vision, no idea, no, no image of teaching to kids. 
today, 90% of my students are kids. So that's the flexibility that I've grown over time, or we could say evolution and how I deal with them. Uh, my nephew's coming next week, and I'm really excited. And he was a he, he doesn't do copyright anymore, but he was a blue cordon, and I mean he was a solid blue cordon, someone that a lot of times Brazilians came and were like, "Is he is he a Brazilian kid?" Because his pronunciation is so good. No, he just grew up with capoeira from a very young age, so his ears train, and he has a natural ability for for. Uh, it's just, he's just smart, <laughs> and um, but over time. I've changed my way of teaching, and I'm hoping when he's here, he can tell the little kids, maybe do a mini workshop of how I used to train classes so the kids today can see. So this is something that's very, very um, uh, important is being able to be flexible in how you do things, that there's not only one way. And the most important part of flexibility is being able to listen to people who are giving you advice. I've seen so many capoeira teachers and yoga teachers and other people just fail because they weren't able to get past their ego and be flexible to listen to other opinions other ideas right next one is responsibility and dependability i think this is pretty self-explanatory right you you need people need to know they can trust you uh, last year, there was a big blowout in the Capoeira community, and we know what that meant. You know, people trust was 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 lost in a lot of groups. A lot of a lot of people talk about, um, oh, I felt my my last teacher was only interested in money, only interested in money. Well, that's the re- that's the dependability and responsibility that um, you have as a master. You have to be involved in what you do, not just for the sake of money, but as a professional, get paid. So that comes to organization, communication, um, creativity, and what what you're doing, right? But on a, on a more down to earth point is just being able, for example, if you say, okay, we're going to do this, and we do it. Things change. You're flexible. Things happen. Oh, I wanted to bring Mestre Boajanchi this year, but I, I changed my mind at the last minute because of so many different um, aspects that were going on. But if I would have said to my, when I tell my students, hey, look, um, this is one thing that I think I'm very lucky. I can tell my students six months out about Bachizado, for example, I'm going to bring Mestre Accordion. If I say that, then they'll pay six months ahead of time. A large amount of money. For example, um, when I brought Mestre Accordion last time, I said, everybody, it's uh, 30,000 yen, which at the time was about $300. And most of my students, especially the adults, paid six months early so that I had the money to do that because I needed the money to be able to pay for everything and up front so I know I wasn't going to lose money. This is very important and also important that, for example, if students come, um, they know you're there. They know you're going to be there on time. My students come 10, 15 minutes early and they know I'm here. So that dependability, especially for the parents when you teach kids, is most important. If you're having trouble, if you're trying to grow kids' classes or adults' classes, but especially kids' classes, and if you're having a hard time with parents um, getting them to stay, check, check your dependability. Have a little self-awareness check and check, am I dependable? Am I on time? Am I, am I ready for class? Do I have what the, stu- what the students need? Do I have everything organized? These dependability things are most important for parents as they're trusting you with their kids. Next is patience. Guys, if I talked about how important patience is, I could just sit here, say nothing, and have the patience to keep going. But on the real patience um i knew years ago that it was going to take from the first day i started capoeira i knew it was going to take a long time to grow a group i knew it was going to take a long time to to get to a vision that i wanted which i feel now i am i'm very blessed to be where i am but i've worked on it because through my my patience i've been able to to understand how to deal with my, my, my wife, my family, my friends, and most important, how I deal with capoeira. People are like, I know so many people who quit capoeira because they lack the patience and resolve to continue. 
each person has their own choice. But Capoeira is a difficult thing to be on long term. Once you hit the 20-year mark from adulthood, from adulthood, like one, or I want to say Capoeira adulthood is the first time you challenge someone to teach. When a person starts teaching, they're actually, it's when they become a Capoeira adult. Because other people are going to start criticizing them. Other people are going to start looking at them. There's a different set of responsibilities. So in a way, you can be a Capoeira practitioner for 20 or 30 years, but you're never really a Capoeira adult until you, you know, you have the full time or you have the responsibility, not even full time, but the responsibility of teaching. Like uh, Contra Mestre Vaquero said in his uh, interview last week, you know, he made a CD, which I thought was fantastic. I, I play it for my students um, at least once a week. And he said, like, you know, someone he really liked was talking behind his back and criticizing him about his CD. You know, that's going to happen. And you got to wade through all that to, to you get to a point where people are like, yeah, but for example, I get a lot of, ah, but Master Sukuri is Master Sukuri. Well, I had the patience and the diligence to get to where I am. And not let anyone take anything from me because I did it. You can't take something away from me that I made. Right? If people say, oh, you stole my students. Well, then they weren't really your students. They were just customers who were going back and forth to do what they want. My students are here and I know I can, I can count on them to be here for the foreseeable future. Finally, the sum total of all of this, the sum total of vision plus inspiration plus organization, plus communication, plus authenticity and self-awareness, plus creativity, plus flexibility, plus responsibility and dependability and patience. As a master or a mestra, you constantly, constantly have to be improving. You cannot just sit back and, and assume that you have like hit the lottery when you have 100 students and that everything's going to be easy. It's constantly improving. People come and go. People quit. People get injured. People get older. People get married. People get divorced. People get sick. People move away. So you're constantly improving and, and doing better to be able to keep the students you have, to keep the community you have, and to and to move forward, right? So you constantly have to improve. For example, I restarted this Patreon. And why? Because it's my way of constantly improving. You guys challenge me, so I constantly improve. Okay, guys, I have a feeling this went a little bit longer than I was planning. And this uh, this room is getting a little bit hot. I guess it's going to be better to, to record during the winter. But I've got a couple new projects coming up. One, the next project I'm working on is going to be that uh, Mestri Sukuri Mestri Linguisa music course. Okay? Uh, Mestri Linguisa was a little bit uh, sick this week. And, you know, we're, I'm praying for him to get better. He looked a lot better this morning. I drove by his house and he's just looking a lot better. And this week, I'm hoping that we can do a podcast, but we'll see. If not, I will do my podcast in Japanese by myself and talk about what's coming up and maybe even possibly these things here. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for supporting. You guys are the best. I love you all. Mestri Sukuri, coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Mestri Vibes. Mestri Vibes.